Good morning and is that on? Yes. good morning and welcome to our celebration of the Holy Spirit as we prepare for the celebration of the uh, Palm Sunday here as we celebrate the Passion of Christ. I ask you at home if you have not already done so to grab a branch or a palm branch if you have one yourself or just any branch at all in fact um, we encourage you to uh, bring bring that branch to the very beginning of the service. We'll start with a, a small simple procession and then we'll ask you to hold up your branches at home and then together we will um, continue the passion of Christ. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Together we, we gather today to herald with the whole church the beginning of this celebration of the Lord's Paschal Mystery. That is to say, his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered into his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate now the Lord's entry into the city for our own salvation, following his footsteps so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. So I ask you now to raise up all your branches at home and together here, and we will bless the branches. Almighty and ever-living God, sanctify now these branches with your blessing, that we who follow the Christ in exaltation may indeed reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Almighty and ever-living God, who as an example of humility for a whole human race, caused our Savior to take flesh and to submit to the cross, graciously grant that now we may heed his lesson of patient suffering. And so they men merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's sit down and listen to the word of God. <clears throat> Chapters 40 to 55 of the book of Isaiah contain the message of a prophet who spoke to God's people during their time of exile in Babylon. Several times the prophet speaks about a servant who will one day deliver God's people. Because the servant is portrayed as suffering, Christ has traditionally identified Jesus with this suffering servant. Let's listen now to our first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear, that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets, and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I will not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Oh, 
sections of St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. He wants the members of the community of Philippi to work harder at unity and humility. To teach this, he quotes an early Christian hymn about Jesus. Let's listen now to our second reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in hu human likeness and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover of my disciples. Disciples then did as Jesus had ordered them and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. He deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after the other, Surely it is not I, Lord. He replied, he said in reply, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said to him in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread and, and said the blessing, broke it, giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. 
For this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for, on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it. I drink it anew in the kingdom of the Father. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I should go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, replying, Do all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I shall have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Tree of life and awesome mystery, in your death we are reborn. Though you die in all of history, still you rise with Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and he said to his disciple sit here while I go over there and pray he took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress then he said to them my soul is sorrowful even to death remain here and keep watch with me he vanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer saying my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. When he had returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again, My father, it is, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking, your will be done. When he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open, he left them and drew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand, when the Son of Man will be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged to sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and he said, Hail, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to the sword and drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will provide me at this very moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out against me as a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be indeed be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. See ourselves in you. If we learn to leave your story, we may die to rise anew. We may die to rise anew.
Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas the high priest, where the scribes and elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death. But they found none, though many false, false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him, Have you no, have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming in the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his robes and said, He is blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. And he went out to the gate. Another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. And then he began to curse and swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and he began to weep bitterly. We remember truth once spoken, the past no true act and word. Every person lost and broken, where's the body of our Lord? Where's the body of our Lord? <coughs> when it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed over to Pilate, the governor. Then, Jesus, then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, what is that to us? Look at, to your, look at yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money but said, it is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasure, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field even today is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said to Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, who questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? 
Jesus said, you say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner named Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, which one do you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Bar Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but the riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look it to yourself. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Gentle Jesus, like the Spirit, come and flame our hearts anew. We may all your joy inherit if we wear the cross with you. If we wear the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes, threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink, mixed with God. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. And they had crucified him. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watching over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days? Save yourself if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribe and elders mocked him and said, he saved others, he cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he wants him. 
for he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onwards, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, this one is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. I invite you to please kneel for a moment. Please stand. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who have fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tomb after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. watching over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening and they said truly this was the Son of God there were many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee ministering to him among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee when it was evening, there came a rich man from Arabatea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in a clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, remember that that imposter, while still alive, said, After three days I'll be raised up. Give orders then that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, he has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, the guard is yours. Go secure it as best you can. So they went and they secured the tomb by fixing a seal on the stone, on the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. said to, to Jesus, do you not see what they are all testifying against you? And he did not reply, not a single, not a single word. 
You know, one of the, the most the struggles of, of listening to the passion narrative is why? Why was Jesus so, so silent? Why was he, why was he completely passive? Him who was so powerful, the Son of God, why not show his strength? Here it is Pilate who thought he was so powerful, the governor of Judea, but why not the Son of God? Show him, show him how strong he really is. That's exactly what his disciples wanted. That's what his disciples were banking on. And because they, he did not, they fell away. They didn't understand. They didn't understand his silence. They did not understand his response to the power of this, of this world. The truth be told is it's not only the disciples back then, even our disciples today, we struggle with his silence. Not only is silence at this moment, but why is silence with, with so many other suffering? Like, I, I don't know how many of you have asked me, why is God so silent now? Where is our God now in the midst of this? Why, why does he not seem to help? Or does he not care for us? As this pandemic uh, starts to find its ravishing across the whole world, now we are beginning to see the, 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 the hugeness of this impact. Not only the disease itself, but the economic impact it's beginning to have across the whole world. It, it is natural to wonder why, why is our God so silent? I, I think to enter into that question, we could do well to enter into the question, why was Jesus so silent today in his passion at that moment? Because that will give us insight. Uh, Ron Rollheiser, uh, along with a number of theologians, does a great job of breaking this open. You see, it, the way he sees it, and I think it's a wonderful way to understand this, this silence, because it is difficult, um, is that for three years, Jesus was in public ministry. He, he, he served people, he preached to people, he loved people. He, he was in the world, active in the world, giving of himself and giving and testifying by his activity, by his action in the world, he was loving and showing God's love to the whole world. And then came what we hear today is the agony in the garden. And this is the pivotal moment where everything changes. Instead of being his active love, he moves to a passive love. That's where we actually get this word for, for passion. It's passive. He remains silent. He does not fight words. He doesn't even scold any of the leaders. He simply is silent and allows all this poison to come at him. He allows this hatred, this cursing, this violence, this anger, all this bitterness and envy, he took it all. And what did he do with it? See, this is the critical point. What he does is he takes that, that hatred, absorbs it, and gives back love. He takes that cursing, absorbs it, and gives back blessing. He takes that bitterness and envy and gives back graciousness and kindness. He takes in the violence and the war of the world and gives back healing and peace. He takes, back, he takes in all the hatred and gives back love. The truth is, is in the silence, the world is transformed that day. And so are we. If we allow ourselves to now imitate Christ, it is not enough to just believe in Christ. We now must imitate him, which means we too then must take in all this poison of the world and, and absorb it and give back more than what is given to us. That, that we transform it. Uh, Ron Moheiser calls it like a water filter. 
as opposed to like an electrical cord which transmit exactly what it gives, it just passes it on. A water filter, think about a water filter does, it, it, it takes in all the poisons, all the, uh, the, the contaminants, it filters it and hands out pure, fresh water. We too are called to take in all this anxiety of the world and to give back uh, understanding, to take in all the fear and anger and, and, to, and to give back peacefulness, to take in all the hatred and all the bickering that we hear and we absorb it and we give back blessing and graciousness. We take in all the envy and all the ugliness of our lives and we allow the silence to transform us and to give back this graciousness, this peace, this love and this forgiveness. My friends, the only way we are going to be able to do that is if we too enter into the silence. Yes, we must do our, our, wear our face mask, wash our hands, and keep uh, physical social distancing from one another to be practical and to be wise. But we must take in the silence. And with it, we must do exactly what Christ did, because that's what it means to be a follower, a disciple of Christ, is to transform the world. And in doing so, we transform ourselves. But it's not by our grace, but it's by the grace of God. So this week, I invite us to enter into the silence. And like Christ, to not say a single word, but to allow this moment, this crisis, to transform us by the grace of God. So let us stand as we, as we pray. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and visible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of all righteousness, God's God, 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 light from light, true God from true God, begotten of made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate in the virtue of Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and punched his body. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism of the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life in the world to come. Amen. Knowing that Jesus is our merciful and compassionate King, we place now our petitions before him as we pray. During Lent, our response to Lord have mercy will be, Lord, save your people. That our church leaders follow the lead of Pope Francis as he seeks care for all people, healing and their protection. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord save, save your, your people. people. That our world leaders work on behalf of those who need by approaching all with an attitude of healing and peace. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord save your people. That our Holy Spirit community and world population affected by this COVID-19 pandemic remain ever mindful of the mercy of God as we transition from Lent to new life in Christ this Holy Week. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord save your people. That those who are sick and suffering 
find relief in Jesus' presence. We especially remember those who have asked for our prayers. Obina Anya, Fulvio Caviglioni, Anne Lucia, Harold Sutherland, and all those listed in the book of prayers. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord save your people. people. That the intention of this Mass for Vaharina Testa, Eduardo Testa, Vicenza Lupinepi, and Holy Spirit Parish community may be acceptable and pleasing to God. Lord have mercy. Lord save your people. That our beloved dead may be met with love and compassion as they are embraced by Jesus. Especially remember those who have recently died. Nicole Conley, Remigio Consunji, Roy Drury Sr., Debbie Higgin, Jerry Lou, Bertha Tsukimoto, Lord have mercy. Lord save him. Loving God, your Son endured death on the cross for us. Listen then with compassion to our prayers and grant us the grace to follow him with all love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and for all of His holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand. So that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may always feel ready the effects of your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and ever to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, and mighty eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed the authority of Christ crucified. And so now with the angels and the saints, we too we give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim.
account of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed into willingly into his own passion, he took the bread into his hands. He broke it, gave it to his disciples and friends, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. A similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks and praise. He gave it to his disciples and friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you Lord this bread of life and this chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit remember Lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Oscar our Bishop, Patrick his brother Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. same simple words. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but said, Look upon the faith of your Church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's not forget a sign of that peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Hey, hey, hey. 
takes away the sins of the world, bless those now are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should have under my roof, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed. And 
expecting to give the rice bowls back uh, today so we thank you for those but we will collect them at another time later on uh, so we just ask you hold them until this is going for Catholic relief services so thank you for that at this point I, I want a, a huge thank you for so many of you who are uh, continuing to give online um, we rely 100% now on your generosity online so we do ask you those that are at home you can go back to the main website and to, if you are not already signed up for online giving, we ask you to please do so. Uh, we are obviously under a huge cash crunch and we thank you uh, for your generosity, not only to support us here locally, but also we'll be able to help other parishes who are even, even worse off. So we thank you uh, for that. Um, I, I want to talk about the little schedule for um, the Holy Week coming up now. So we are doing a reconciliation service. Obviously, we're not hearing confessions in person, but we will be uh, on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. We will have a reconciliation service here, and we'll walk you through what it means to do perfect contrition at home. So we encourage you to come uh, to that uh, online at 7 p.m. That's not will not be held as recorded. So we do ask you to uh, please do that on Wednesday night. Uh, I will uh, take the homily I gave today and expound a little bit more on. On it is called the agony in the garden and why is so pivotal uh, what we are experiencing this week is really a key to unlock so much of our faith um, of this not only just this whole week of Easter but indeed of our entire journey of faith so we encourage you to come to that it's about an hour session at 7 p.m. here online and that will be recorded on Thursday we will have the Holy Sa the Lord's Supper at 7 p.m. and we do encourage you to come live to that and join us and then immediately following that we will uh, have a, a prayer we will have the altar of repose which we will modify it's in the church we will have that live until midnight and there will be two people praying also alongside the presence of Christ uh, during that time so we encourage you to come and join us for that prayer of silence and uh, maybe you can spend your hour of prayer at home and then on Good Friday the Passion of the Lord is at 12 noon stations across are at 2 p.m. so we encourage you to stay for that and this is the opportunity for many of you who never experienced the Easter Vigil. It's at 8.30 on Saturday night. And then on Sunday morning, we have the Easter Mass uh, at 9.30. But again, we do encourage you to come and join us live. I know that's a sacrifice. We encourage you to participate in it live 
bike sort of uh, being here and, and making it as best we can, uh, we need the community. So I want to do a little bit about our four minutes today, so I'm not going to ask somebody to uh, time me here, but um, I want to talk a little bit about the, um, the service. Uh, service has been a hallmark here at Holy, Holy Spirit Community. And we've worked at Sacred Heart Community Services, the mission trip to East Texas, Nicaragua, and of course our recent village has, among other many other ministries we do, such as Sanguish Ministry and others. And the community uh, lives the gospel out of the peripheries, and we have always done this, even in the midst of our shelter-in-place order and the call to flatten the curve. We have found other ways to serve now. So I want to talk about three primary ways, and you'll see more information on the website on all of these. Number one is homemade uh, surgical masks. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that. The second is a food donation and distribution network, and third is a shop for me. The first one uh, is homemade surgical masks. Uh, as you know, we've been told uh, by the CDC to wear uh, surgical masks of, of some sort uh, when we're out in public at any time and the supply of surgical masks is in critical all-time lows throughout the entire nation. Uh, so we are, are, are going to help. So Leah Harris um, have, have asked to make homemade uh, surgical masks as an emergency stopgap measure. Um, Leah Harris at a parish with the LAF group and others who are willing and able to sew. Uh, we have uh, different ways to make them. We have instructions on how to do that. Uh, even if you don't sew, you can probably help by donating hard to find uh, plastic and 100% cotton uh, materials. Uh, so if you do, if you go to the website, contact Leah Harris, she is taking uh, charge of, of that one. More information in the bulletin as well. Food, do, uh, food do, donation distribution. Uh, Catholic Charities uh, is partnering with Second, uh, Second Harvest uh, Food Bank Center and the collaboration together. They are basically a boat organization operating a drive through pickup for food. Uh, so what does that mean? Food distribution is uh, coordinated by the food bank and they're putting it together and delivering it in parish parking lots. Now, it's not gonna be in our parish parking lot because we don't have as many needs, but in neighboring parishes, they're not using parish facilities, but they're using the, the, their, uh, the parish parking lot. Um, more information again on the website and on the parish in the parish bulletin. You can talk to uh, Bob Fields is our coordinator for that. And then finally, the, the other one which is really interesting one is the Shop for Me program. It's caring for our front frontline heroes, the healthcare workers and their families. They are working, as you know, endless hours. They are, um, they don't have as much time and of course they are exposed to the greatest risk because they're at the hospitals and dealing with patients. So we've come up with a program where we, uh, the volunteers receive a shopping list they go and do the shopping and then they deliver the, sh the, the shopping to the healthcare families at their house and then they pay, the healthcare workers will pay via Venmo, it's an online electronic payment system. So two things we need, we need healthcare workers to sign up for it. Uh, we know there are a lot of you in the parish uh, and then beyond uh, who are our healthcare workers. Uh, we want you to know we love you and support you and this is our only way of being able to give back to you in some way. So allow us to please help you and sign up for a program. And then we need volunteers, which is basically two families uh, who will, or two people who will sign up to help each family. And they shop basically once a week or, or so on behalf of that family. So go to the website, go to the Parish Bulletin, more information on that. And, and finally, we do, um, we do want you to know we're trying our hardest to communicate with you. So if you please go to the website, there's a lot of information there all the time on the, new, on the Parish website. We have a community update that we send electronically. If you don't already get that, you can sign up for it. And the second thing we have, we, have it, we do still have the bulletin, but it's not going out by paper, it's only going out by electronic. So you can sign up for that on the website as well. You can also sign up if you're not getting the, the weekly homilies from, from the parish from myself, then you can also sign up for that. They're both av available in audio and, uh, and in paper. Um, so, and of course, as many of you are already on Facebook, we are doing our hardest to reach out to as many on Facebook Live and on Facebook Notices and on, uh, on YouTube as well. But thank you for being here uh, on this time and we ask you to please continue to support us in every way possible. Let's stand for final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass and the now go and enjoy the peace of Christ.
Thanks be to God.